because um, he, he knew that someone would have to die for, for the sins of the world. Why? Why can't God forgive? Like he used to in the past. In the Old Testament, the um, Bible, um, sacrifices were made and it was the animals killed, their blood was shed. That was pointing to a time when, when the person who the New Testament calls the Lamb of God will come. In the Old Testament, the Lamb, it has to be a perfect sacrifice. Okay, you're explaining to me why he was killed. I told you I don't want to understand why he was killed. Yeah. We we are, we already know why he came to pay for the sins of the world and so on. Okay. Yes, this is a Christian understanding and doctrine that they believe in. Yeah. I'm not asking you why he was killed. I'm asking, can you conceive the idea of God being killed by? You know, before the animals were being killed, that wasn't God. Those were animals. Yes, okay. I can understand Sorry. animals can be killed yeah. for uh, for whatever reasons. You know, yeah. they believed in. Okay. But animal is not God. Yes, I, I still find it quite troubling when people compare God to a lamb. You know, first they made him human, then they made him an animal. You know, that's already already an insult to God to reduce him to the level of human and then to re reduce him to the level of a lamb, an animal. That is al already insulting enough. But I still want to understand how can you comprehend the, the idea of God being crucified by his own creation? How does how do you reconcile that with the Almighty God's concept? You know the concept of Almighty God. Why is that important? Why? Because God is immortal. God doesn't die. Do you, do you believe God is immortal? Yes, but also spirit spirit can die. Spirit can die. Flesh, flesh can Say again. Die. Spirit can die and flesh can die. It can die. And we yeah, if God spirit can die, flesh can die. My question is, can God die? God. God, God doesn't die. God, you know that. No. But Jesus came and Jesus died. Hence, Jesus is not God. If he can die, he cannot be God. Jesus um, has human uh, uh, as well as divine. So um, he, 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 he was able to not only die, but also to, to, rise, to rise again, to, to be raised by God the Father. Do you believe Jesus is fully God? Yes, I do. Do you believe the Father is fully God? I believe that Jesus, or, yes, yes. Did the Father ever die? Well, the father did need to die. Jesus did the, not, not need to die. Did the father ever die? No, but Jesus died. Yeah, I know Jesus died according to your belief, but Jesus, what I'm asking Jesus, is... Jesus also rode again, so Jesus is alive now. Yeah, yeah, well, he died and then he's alive now. That's yeah. called resurrection. Yeah, that's yes? Yes, yes? Does an immortal being need to resurrect? Um, well, he, he had to die for sin. You're asking, you're giving me the reasons again. Okay. I'm not asking okay. for the reason. Okay. okay. An immortal being, by definition, doesn't die. If someone doesn't die, then it follows that there's no need for resurrection. But because Jesus was both killed and resurrected, clearly proves to us that he is mortal. However, God Almighty is always immortal. What does that tell you? That the nature of God Almighty is not something that we see in Jesus Christ. Not only did Jesus change in nature, like being only divine, now he's divine and flesh. Yes, I know many Christians say that, but his divine nature did not change. But the essence doesn't include just the divine nature in the case of Jesus. The essence includes all of Jesus, his natures, his characteristics, his attributes. That is what the essence is. You as a human being, you have an essence. I cannot separate your humanity and your spirit and your soul, I cannot separate it because that's what makes you up. All these things make you up as a human. If you have no soul, that means you're a dead person. Yes? A person without a soul is a dead person. Yes? Soul, However... Soul Say again? Soul is, soul is immortal. Yeah, but you're not immortal. The whole, the whole meaning of death is to separate the soul from the body. And did that happen to Jesus Christ on the cross according to your belief? Yeah? Yes? So his flesh died and his soul did not die. Same thing happens to you when you die. Yes? Your soul doesn't die, your flesh dies. So in both cases, in your case and in the case of Jesus, the only difference is the method how he died. Yes? The method he was killed. However, the concept of death is the same in the case of every mortal. That the soul gets separated from the body, hence the mortal dies. 
However, that doesn't apply to God Almighty. Another mortal that dies, is it? You just said it's... it's it, yeah, sorry, the no, no, mortal immortal, mortal, yeah, yeah, immortal yeah. does not die, okay. mortal dies. Yes, you are a mortal, Jesus Christ is mortal. Yes, you both are susceptible to death, you are subject to death. God Almighty, according to 1 Timothy 6.16, just like yours, <laughs> just like yours. Because your flesh dies and your soul doesn't die, that doesn't make you immortal, my friend. And many Christians, unfortunately, have this concept that the soul did not die, so hence he is immortal. No, your soul doesn't die either. Yes, you will be judged by God Almighty and depending on your deeds or depending on God's uh, judgment, you will either face eternal damnation or eternal reward. Yes, but that is up to God Almighty to judge. However, no one can say that you or I or any mortal out there cannot die. The whole idea of, uh, sorry, the, 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 whole dif uh, the, the main difference between mortal and immortal is that mortals die an immortal being like God Almighty does not die. And that is mentioned in 1 Timothy 6, 16, where it says, He alone is immortal, who lives in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see. Yes? So immortal, the definition is already there. Someone who doesn't die. Mortal, on the other hand, even if he dies for three days and three nights, still considered mortal. Yes? But the concept of God dying by his own creation is something, something contradictory to the teaching of the Bible and the Quran. Yes, what, what particular teaching of the, Bible? the teaching of the Bible in First Timothy 16 that God is immortal. Well, that's just one verse. I mean, the, the, How many verses do you need? Well, I can show you from, 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 from the Old Testament. The yeah, prophecy. okay, you show me a verse from the Old Testament. I can tell you from the Old Testament that the prophets said that one person will come to die. Yeah, the Messiah. Yeah, the Messiah was never to be worshipped as God in the in the Jewish tradition, even today. Today the Jews are still waiting for the Messiah to come. However, they are not expecting God Almighty to come as a man. So do not try to confuse the Messiah with, well, uh, the, sorry, the Jewish uh, concept of Messiah with that of the Christian concept of Messiah. Because for the Christian, the Messiah is not just a man, but he's a, he's a God who became a man. You see what I mean? This is not the teaching of Judaism. So do not confuse the two. The Old Testament, nowhere in the Old Testament will you find that God is able to die. Nowhere in the Old Testament or even the New Testament, in fact, that God is able to die. This is a later... There are types in the Old Testament. Abraham offered his son and that was a type of what would follow that God would give his son as a sacrifice. Did, Ab did Abraham's son die in the sacrifice um, or was he substituted? He, 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 Abraham's son didn't die, that's right, he, 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 he was substituted. Absolutely, you see, you see this is a clear concept that Islam teaches that Jesus did not die but he was substituted. Yes? Now, now you tell me which one is close to Abraham's sacrifice, the concept that the Christians preach that his son died. If, if you're basing it just on the, the association of Abraham and Isaac. But you brought up the Abraham, okay, the concept uh, of Abraham okay, sacrifice, well, sacrificing his son. You brought that up. Uh, okay, I can speak about Abraham. Give Abraham. me another example where, okay. where it uh, points to the fact that God will die, come and die for you. Where? Um, in Psalms, David prophesied that um, uh, in Psalm 22 that uh, uh, there, there, there will be a, a resurrection. Uh, that is a prophecy about where, where in Psalms 22 does it say that this is God Almighty? Where? In fact, if you read the beginning of Psalm 22, this is exactly as Jesus cried on the cross, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Yes? So first and foremost, this is the prayer of David in Psalm 22, when he's saying that by day and by night I pray, but you do not listen to me. Yes? And then later on he says that he even, he even considers himself to be just a worm somebody who's insignificant. Do you believe Jesus was a bomb? He wasn't. I believe that Psalm 22 is, yeah. is a prophecy of Christ's death. So you're telling me that Jesus is a worm, like David says he's a worm? Um, Beginning of Psalm 22, you know? Yeah, 22, know, 1, 2, 3, 4, if you read? Know, yes. Know, so, so do you believe that God, God abandoned Jesus? Um, for, for a brief time, yes, because Jesus... I thought he was God. How can God abandon him? Jesus, it doesn't Jesus, follow, does it? Jesus was bearing the sin of the world. Okay? God is holy, so God's um, 
had to, to, to look upon Jesus when Jesus was bearing that sin. So let me get this right. You're telling me that Jesus was bearing the sins of the world, yes. but God was holy, so God cannot look upon Jesus. For, for that particular time. For that particular time. Yes. Did Jesus become the biggest sinner in the world? Because now he's got the sin of the whole world on him. That's effectively, that's what you're telling me. That God holy, he's so holy, he cannot even look upon his own son now. And this son is meant to be fully God according to your belief. So now you've got one God who is, who is bearing the sins of the world. And the other God cannot even look upon him. Hence the other God now abandon him. Even brief time, my friend. Just imagine the Trinity has broken for a brief time. The Trinity that you believe in has now broken. One God now cannot look at the other God. Huh? Yeah, it's illogical, in, in, it's, it's incoherent, illogical, the Trinity concept is such that you have to could, play such many, many past, gymnastics with words. Yeah. Can I just ask one quick question? Yeah. Is Allah mortal? Is Allah mortal? Allah is immortal. No, is Allah mortal? I just told you, he's immortal. No, but in order to be immortal, you have to be mortal. Who said that? You've got to have be, be because you can't be immortal. Why can't you be immortal? Because it's not it's it's in relationship to mortality. Why? Because that's that's the semantics. Okay, let me ask you this: Are you immoral? Are you immoral? Immoral? Yes. Am I moral or immoral? Are you immoral? Am I immoral? Yes. I'm not sure what that means. Because morality is related to immorality based on your concept. Morality. So you have to be immoral in order to be moral. That's basically what you're telling me. It doesn't yeah, follow, it, does it? it? Well, it's different because that's, it's a, not belief, different. that's a, a behavior and a belief rather than a substance. No, the nature of God is such that He does not die. By nature, He wouldn't be God if He died. But He's the one who's responsible everyone, for life and death. Everyone's got immortal souls. Yeah, we, but we're talking about God here, no, not no, no, everyone. No. We're talking about no, everyone has immortal souls. Immortal. Yeah, everyone is immo immortal. Sorry. immortal soul. No, 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 it's not immortal soul. Immortal in the sense means if God wants even a soul, even a spirit like an angel to perish, he can do that. It depends what you mean you cannot perish. say immortal. Perish means gone, good, killed, angels gone. Spirit. Yes. Angels are not immortal. Aren't they? But why is he perfect? Sorry. Immortal? Yeah, I agree. Angels are not immortal. Yes, but he's not an. He's a. You're, you're an atheist or agnostic. I forgot. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, so that's why you. You're, no, no. It's, it's good. You ask this question because many people might have this question that souls are all immortal. They are not. If God wants to perish, but, a soul wants to basically finish a soul or even cease to exist of that particular soul, he can do that. But fundamentally, unless God does that, the souls are immortal. There's no such rule. I don't know where you get that rule, fundamentally. There's no such fundamental rule that souls are immortal. If but God if, wants if, to... Unless, unless God uh, perishes the soul, yeah. the soul is therefore immortal, immortal otherwise. Yeah, so if God wants a soul to be immortal, he can do that. No, if no, God no, wants to perish a soul, he can immortal. do that. No, there's no such natural thing, I'm telling you. So it all depends on how God wants to, uh, basically how, how God wants to create that soul. If God wants it to be perishable at a particular time, then it can. Like, like humans. Time limit. Say again? That's what happened with the, all the world of animals, mm. the dead time. Yeah. When the, the believers go to the heaven and the unbelievers go to the hell, yeah. the, the animals, all to the animals will yeah. perish. And they will say by the Quran, They wish when the unbelievers see the hell and see the animals, the animals become don't have souls. Yeah. They will yeah. Do the animals have souls? Wishes to be Actually, according to the Christians, they don't. Am I right? No, no, the animals no, don't have souls. Yeah. In, in, in Islam, they do? Yeah, yeah we believe they, they do. Yes. And we have, must be more mercy, even we eat them. Yeah. We, we should and be merciful to all of them. Yeah. I wonder why, why Christians believe animals don't have soul. Okay, because of the Bible. Okay. It's a, <laughs> That's a good answer. Contradict with the science. Yeah. Huh? Okay. It's anyway, so let's get back no, to. Of we're yeah. Let's, many, many things that contradict. Let's let's get back to the discussion. So look, okay, look I don't know for you if it's comprehensible. Sorry, if it's if, if it makes sense to you that God, who is immortal, is be is is able to die by his own creation. To me, that is inconceivable. You know, for God Almighty, who is omnipotent, to die by his own creation, yes, when he could have easily forgiven them. Why why have this condition that until blood is, is, is spilled or until there is a human sacrifice, you cannot be forgiven? Why have this condition? Uh, okay, the Old Testament sacrifice of, of, of the blood yeah. um, was to make, to make an atonement for the soul. 
Uh, but it wasn't all the time, you know that. Huh? For example, if you committed adultery, not you. I mean, let's say if somebody committed adultery in the Old Testament time, or they killed someone, mm -hmm. yes, they can't just sacrifice an animal and get no. away with it. No, no, no. Do you agree? So no. there were certain capital punishments sure. for certain capital offenses. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. So you cannot just sacrifice those sacrifices which you find in Leviticus. Yeah. Yes? Those were meant for unintentional sins. No, not just unintentional sins. No. Mainly unintentional sins. No, so if you look at, no, if you have capital no. offenses, you cannot just get away with it. No, not just unintentional and, sins. And by the way, it wasn't animals all the time. You could even donate flour if you did not have the money to buy an animal for sacrifice. The, 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 yes? The, 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 the so it wasn't blood sacrifice all the time. You could have sacrificed the, 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 on the altar Says, flour, which you make bread out of. In, in, it's interesting, but the Lord Moses says that it's the, it's the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. So that, that is. Um, yeah, but that's a, that's what that's the question I'm asking you. Why this rule? Also in uh, Hebrews 9:22, when it says there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. Do you believe that? I do believe. So do you, do you actually are believing in payment, not forgiveness? Do you know that? A payment by blood is not the same as forgiveness. For example, if somebody borrowed a hundred pounds for, from you and you tell that person I forgive you are you still expecting some payment from him no, you're letting them off, you? exactly but that's you're, called true forgiveness yeah. when you don't expect but, but, something once you're forgiven yeah. them okay but, but if someone breaks the law and they go and the judge says to them there's a penalty for, 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 for breaking the law yeah that's called that's payment the, yeah that's called payment exactly I totally that, agree that, with you that's what happened with the animal sacrifices the animal lost its life okay and, uh, the, uh, and that, that, that blood was, was sufficient for God to understand that, um, that, that, that the sin could be removed. So it's payment by blood in that case. Yes. So there is no true forgiveness. You see what I mean? But why, in order, why, why, why is it not true forgiveness? Because it's not true forgiveness because when you actually expect payment by blood, that's not really forgiveness. But, it's, it's like the play it, of Shakespeare, yeah. you know, a flesh, <laughs> what do they call that? Um, a, pound a pound of flesh, okay. yeah. Okay. You see what I mean? Yeah. So that Jewish person was asking for a pound of flesh, yes, as, as, as a counterpayment. Yeah. Yes? See? Now this is what I'm saying. In Islam, we have the concept of true forgiveness, where Allah doesn't expect blood sacrifice, a human sacrifice, or an animal sacrifice for the atonement of sins. Yes, Allah is able to forgive you truly. Yes, if the condition is if you repent to Him truly. A true repentance can give you forgiveness from Allah without Allah expecting anything in return. Now this is the concept we have in Islam. But However, you just demonstrated that in Judaism and in, uh, in Christianity, you don't have such a concept because God is either asking you payment in blood or maybe payment as a human sacrifice in the case of Jesus in the New Testament time. Yes? This concept of human sacrifice is something that God completely forbade and prohibited in the Old Testament time. Well, well no, because um, in um, Abraham, when he was going to uh, offer uh, Isaac, God uh, yeah. obviously you know, knew what was going to happen. I mean, why did God say that you... That was a test. A test yeah, because yeah. we know ultimately Abraham's son wasn't sacrificed. No. Yes? No, Whether you right. believe it's Isaac or Ishmael, that's irrelevant. With this point, the point is at the end, he was not sacrificed. Correct. You see what I mean? Correct. So God did not expect a human sacrifice. It was, it was a time. Yeah, it was a test. For example, if I give you a test, yes, and I know that you will carry out the test willingly, yes, and at the last minute I stop. Yeah, that's fine. At the last minute, if I stop you and say now you have passed the test because you were about to do what I, was, I told you, yeah. that means you have passed the test. The whole purpose of the test was to see that if you were sincere and if you were going to obey the command of God sincerely. You see what I mean? That was the whole purpose of the test. It was never intended to kill and sacrifice a human. You see what I mean? However, however, in the New Testament... It was a type of what was to happen because God... No, it wasn't because... God's son, Abraham had his son Isaac. And in that case, God said to go through the... Yeah, but in the case of Jesus, <laughs> the sacrifice was carried out. Yeah. The human sacrifice was carried out. Was carried you see out. what I mean? Yes. That was contrary to the test of Abraham, where the human sacrifice was not carried out. No. But there was a substitution. So that actually follows closely to what the Muslims are preaching, that Jesus, yes, Isa salam, was not crucified, was not killed. Yes, it appeared to them so. 
they thought that he was crucified, but he, didn't, he wasn't in, in reality. He ascended to heaven, which is in the next verse. He ascended to heaven by the permission of God. Just like you believe Elijah was ascended to heaven, right? Without being killed. Yes? So if Elijah can ascend to heaven, so can Jesus Christ. If God wants to keep him alive until the day of, uh, of, of the Antichrist, when, he, when the second uh, mission of uh, Jesus starts, during his second coming, God is capable of doing that. Absolutely. You see what I mean? Let me ask you this. Can you be forgiven without the sacrifice of a human? Without human sacrifice? Yeah. Can you be forgiven? I can only be forgiven by, by the, the, the blood of Christ. Which is human sacrifice, right? Yes. Yes? yes. You see, this is a pagan concept. Sorry to tell you this. Only the pagans used to believe in a human sacrifice. And that is the reason they were rebuked in the Old Testament times. You know, when they used to sacrifice to Baal, Yes, the, the God of the pagans, they used to sacrifice the children, they used to put them in the fire or something like that. Yes, God said that this did not even cross his mind to sacrifice humans, yes, to a deity. How can God Almighty now turn, make a complete U-turn and say now that is the only way for your atonement? 